So I'm back in Castle Rock for yet another training block for another Ironman. And this time it's Ironman Kona, the world championship, um, which is not really what I had planned on doing when I started the season. Um, but things definitely took quite a bit of a turn sort of in that uh, spring type season. Um, but I'm really excited to be focused on Kona. I know um, obviously a lot of the guys in this race will have planned this over a year in advance, planning their training towards this race and their whole build for the season. And for me, it doesn't take a super genius to kind of look at it and realize that I've kind of had a reactionary race season in terms of my racing plans. Um, at the start of the year, when the Ironman series was announced, it just seeing the three Ironmans were required and me having only ever done one before and not having really done that well in it, um, I kind of decided, okay, I'm not gonna focus on the Ironman series. I'm gonna, you know, go for a strong start to the season, try to qualify for the T100 series, um, and then try to get into that series and just sort of focus on the middle distance. Um, but as the season progressed, I did well in Oceanside, had a bit of bad luck and some mechanical issues in uh, St. George, uh, and then had a good day in Chattanooga. And I did go over and race the T100 in San Fran and just didn't have a good day. I wasn't ready for the dynamics of the race, didn't have a good enough swim. And I just sort of raced on my own all day, uh, ended up 15th. So at that point, I realized that the T100 series, although I may qualify for one or two more in the year, it's just not gonna be something that I'm gonna be able to have like a really good overall ranking in. And I just wasn't really willing to commit to trying to perform well in a series when I don't really know if I'm gonna be into a race or not until sometimes maybe only two or three weeks before, so, uh, or less. So um, I decided to shift focus and I started, honestly, the Ironman series kind of inspired me to, uh, to do an Ironman and, and to see what I can do at that distance. So I went over, did Lake Placid, and I trained here in Castle Rock for that race. And that was my first Ironman of, of the series and my first one in a long time. And I finished seventh, as I've talked about, and had a pretty good day. And then I thought, all right, let's focus on this series and see if I can like come back and maybe have a good day because I qualified for Kona. So then I knew, okay, if I can put together one other good Ironman and then Kona, uh, I think I'll have a good chance in the series. Um, so then went over to Frankfurt and unfortunately didn't have a good day there. Uh, I, I was having a good race and then I crashed, which a lot of people did. Uh, it was super, super rainy and wet conditions. And that sort of ended my chance of having a good race there. I still finished, but uh, the body was just shutting down pretty hard from, from the moment I crashed really. Um, so then didn't really get any valuable points there. Um, but, you know, I still wanted to come to Kona and have that experience and, um, you know, really absorb that experience and, and sort of learn and, and give myself a great chance for a good day. But also I wanted to go to Kona without a lot of stress about, um, you know, oh, I really need to have a great race here. So um, I decided to do Michigan and Augusta 70.3s during my build up to Kona, um, one Michigan and then Augusta got canceled, but we were able to go over to Chattanooga Ironman to do that race. And I had a better race, I would say, at Chattanooga than even I did at Lake Placid. Uh, there was no swim, so it was a little bit different, but it was a better tune-up for Kona, even though it was only four weeks out. And doing a full four weeks out is pretty close. Um, I definitely learned a lesson in pacing, especially for the run. Um, but I still had overall, I would say, a better performance in Lake Placid. So um, things were trending in the right direction. And especially since I wasn't too ready for Chatty, um, I think that it bodes well for Kona. Now, I'm here in Castle Rock training for Kona. Really, it's only about a couple weeks of hard training because um, once you recover from the Ironman and then you have to taper into Kona, it looks like it, really it's about two weeks of specific training. and. My fitness is good. I showed that at Chattanooga. I know, um, I mean, I pushed great power and had great speed on the bike. I ran, my run fitness was there and it, sh it showed potential. I just need to pace better. And then I know I could have run under 245. So um, 
so things are in the right spot and I talked to my coach and we really decided that in this two week kind of hard block for Kona, we don't need to do any hero workouts or like try to do anything above and beyond what I've done this season. And even, you know, a little bit less, like some of the bike workouts I've done this year and even runs, um, the longest ones are probably not gonna be in this block. This block is really about getting specific for Kona. So um, I'm, I've got the altitude here, which really helps me in the heat. I've, I've noticed every time I've raced a hot race after altitude, I just don't feel as hot. I don't feel like the heat is limiting me as much. So automatically that I think is gonna help a little bit, but we're also doing a lot of specific heat sessions where we're in the basement with uh, no fan and sort of wearing overdressing on the bike to really get the humidity up and just get the body temperature up. Um, doing quite a few of those sessions on the bike and the run. Um, sometimes with, with intensity, but sometimes just adding the heat as part of the mileage piece of the riding. So at like a kind of a zone two effort at the most. Um, but then also doing some passive heat prep. There's a steam room at the pool that we train at here in Castle Rock um, where we can get the body temperature up pretty significantly there. Especially right after a swim workout, you jump in there and, and it's, it's definitely really hot. So I think that one's even better than the sauna because it's the steam room's obviously very humid. So it's a little more specific. Um, and yeah, just trying to, you know, get some of those Kona specific adaptations. Uh, obviously the climate here isn't exactly the same as Kona. We have had hot weather, which has been um, a little bit lucky for October. So some of the days have been between like 26 and 30 degrees and I'm trying to do my runs kind of out in the heat, uh, the hot part of the day, but it is obviously dry. So, um, doing some of those trainer sessions, sometimes me and Matt both on the trainer, it really does get humid down there and then no fan and you know, it gets hot quickly. Um, so that's kind of the focus of this block. Um, obviously like, could I, would my maximum potential in Kona be better if I didn't do these, you know, a couple of these other races, maybe, um, from a fitness perspective, probably, but I really think that sort of that, um, that experience I got in Chattanooga was really important. Um, I, I don't think I'm going to be super tired in going into Kona, especially with sort of this strategy where we're not pushing huge volume in training, um, or anything crazy with intensity. We're just sort of trying to shift it towards what I need for Kona. Um, so obviously being here in Castle Rock, I have the benefit of training with Matt. Um, not quite as much is going to be overlapping as maybe last time I was here. We decided to opt out of the Boulder training days this time, but we're overlapping a lot of our swimming on Mondays, Fridays, and then the Saturday sessions. We both sort of have a specific trainer session trying to get heat adaptation so we can do that at the same time and sort of make it even hotter down there, which is nice. Um, not really running together which you know probably a good thing for me because uh running with matt just puts me up over threshold pretty quickly so um super grateful that he's been able to you know been generous to have me here a second time and it's been i think really good for me here because i'm totally focused on the training and uh even just the adaptation to the, to the altitude here at 6,000 feet or i think around 1800 meters is definitely a positive thing that is gonna help me when getting into Kona, feeling that kind of boost, getting down to sea level. So in terms of the Ironman series, um, I'm still sitting in the top three right now as we speak, making this video. Um, looking at sort of how many races guys have and what's coming for the rest of the year, um, it looks like I may have an outside shot at holding to an op holding on to a top 10, it's really gonna depend on how Kona goes. If I can have a really solid day there and get like 5,000 points or something around there, um, that puts me in a, a better position uh, to be able to hold on there. But a ton of guys in the top 10 and 15 only have four races. And as soon as I get that fifth one, they're gonna be probably jumping ahead of me. So uh, I'm trying not to focus too much on the overall ranking. I'm just gonna go to Kona, do the best I can there, have, a, have as good of a day as I can and sort of use that opportunity with the sponsors and um, networking and just experience kind of that Kona vibe that everyone loves that I haven't had a chance to uh, to experience yet. So I'll go there and do that race and then I'll kind of assess uh, after that if 
where I'm at in the series and uh, whether I'm going to focus on the series next year or what comes after. But would love your support watching Kona. Just uh, that's like the coolest race I've ever watched. I remember uh, it was like 2017 Kona when Lionel was leading for a long time and I was at like my family Thanksgiving thing and I'm just like watching this Kona race and everyone's like, what the heck is this? I don't even know what a triathlon is. So um, yeah, definitely tune into the race and uh, send, send your positive vibes. It's gonna be hot out there. It's crazy tough competition, but I'm just glad to have the opportunity to do it. So uh, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you in the next one.